photo p if you're at home and you need to edit your images you can use photop.com it's free uh, it can be a bit glitchy but it's very very similar to photoshop and obviously when you're in college you can use the full version of photoshop um, you might want to use other image editing software but these are the two that will probably suffice and work well when you're in college or at home right photoshop first off then uh, i've put photoshop in my dock again it will be if you go to the launch pad and have a look through you'll see photoshop you can drag it down to your dock i'm going to open up photoshop now and it's opened on my second screen let me drag it back and here we have photoshop i'm going to open up a file from my shoot let's go through and find one that one and open that up so there's photoshop opened um, if I just, whoops, it's not happening, is it? Let me just make that smaller. Because what I want to do is show you the two screens side by side. It's a little bit uh, huge. Okay. Bear with. Let's get that sorted. Okay. So there's Photoshop. So I'm going to open up a new tab and I'm going to make it smaller and there we are we're going to have a look now at photo P see the similarities and slight differences but not nothing major so if you type in on a Google search you can always save this I usually save it in one of my tabs I've been looking for logos look uh, photop.com should open up eventually okay as you can see I made it I make it a bit big there we go so I'm going to open a file from my computer just like I did in Photoshop I'm going to go to my desktop one and see if I can find that image there it is and open it up now what as you can see there's loads of adverts here which is a bit annoying because it takes up a lot of the screen I'm trying to annoy trying to let that not annoy you so what's similar well if you look at all the tools down here they're all very similar so here we have a move tool here we have a move tool and if you go down and, and look at the different tools they're very very similar all the way down you've also got the same layers uh, if I go to uh, I don't know why I've got all those layers actually it's strange I just get rid of those I don't know why they're there put them in the bin okay I've got the main layer there I don't know why that happened okay so similarities so when you're working at home you can use this very very similar okay i'm going to minimize that for now and i'm going to show you photoshop because that's what we're, we're going to be using in college and you can practice as i say using uh, photop at home as well basic editing in photoshop well, what do we do well normally i set uh, the tools up so I can see what I'm doing. So what I like to do is go to view. No, I don't. I go to window. I quite like to have a navigator. And this allows me to make the image fit the screen to whatever size I want. And I can zoom in and out and move around. If I go really close, you can see that you can zoom in around your image and then pull it back to fit in the screen. That's quite handy to have. Also, you've got a history. So what you've got is everything you do you can go back and forth I'll look at that after um, okay so what do we need to do well I tend to as I'm working create another layer I do that that's the background locked layer I tend to copy that where it says plus I've got two layers I'm going to work on the top layer 
so that when I turn the top layer off, I'll see the before and after and what I've done. The only thing it doesn't uh, save is the crop. If, if, if you have cropped, it will stay cropped. Okay, let's go then. I don't think this needs an awful lot doing to it, but I'll show you all the things that we basically use. Some people like to use uh, adjustments here where you can brightness and contrast, level, they're all here and they'll create separate layers and you can turn them on and off. Nothing wrong with that and if you like working that way that's absolutely fine. I prefer personally to work here in the image adjustments and you get exactly the same uh, sections that you have on the side there. I tend to start with levels, there is a shortcut command, command L. It shows you a histogram. Now this histogram, like a mountain range, shouldn't really have any gaps in it. I can see that there's a lot of this end is the dark pixels, these are the light pixels, so these, are, these are the medium pixels. So I tend to use this a little bit like a brightness and contrast where you can darken areas. I don't think I want to lighten areas because I'll lose detail in all of the highlighted metals, but I could probably darken down some of the midtones as well. And you can just do it by eye and you can preview what you've done. If this is in the way, you can just drag it to the side and just preview before and after. I'm happy with that. Okay, with this shot, I can see that the depth of field is uh, quite shallow. So this is all sharp and this section isn't. So I think I'm going to use the crop tool and pull in the crop. And again, it will make it more abstract if I crop in to where I think will suit the shot. Get rid of that bit as well. Quite uniform-ish. If you're happy with the crop, you can either double click in here or tick. So there's your crop. Oh, I'm not sure about that bit there. Let's pull that out. Again, you can decide what you want to do with your, your images. So there, I, I've leveled that off now and I've cropped it. What else can we do? Well, it does depend on your image. You may or may not need to edit. Other things you can look at are brightness and contrast. I'll show you what it does, but it, this one probably doesn't need it. Brighten, contrast, and preview. I'm going to cancel that, but that's what that does. Image adjustments again. You may find that the colour balance might be a bit out. So what you can do to, to that, I mean, that's quite green with a reflection. You can warm it up, cool it down. And again, you can play around with the different slightly colour variants. I'm going to leave it as it is. Another image adjustment. Um, hue saturation I wouldn't go mad with that you can very similar to what we just done you can change the hue and the saturation of it but again I wouldn't go too far with those they look a bit silly something you might need to do as well is sharpen your image again this doesn't look too bad filter sharpen and sharp mask doesn't sound like it's going to work but it, it does and again, don't go bonkers with this, it looks a bit silly. The amount you sharpen and the radius. It's not always easy to see. Slightly sharpened up the scratches. If I bring it up a little bit more in preview, slightly sharpened it up, especially these scratches around here. Threshold those keep on naught. And I'm going to say okay to that. Some of you might prefer your images to be in black and white. If you do, um, you can use the black and white here, but it gives you so much choice. I find it quite confusing, to be honest. Lots and lots of variations. Um, and you can adjust as well all the way down as you're going. Um, nothing wrong with using that, but it can take a lot of time. I tend to use this, this way of adjusting. Image adjustment and go to the gradient map. I find it generally gives you a good result. If you go into the basics, you have a, the black and whites there. That one makes it go black. And there, that one there, so. And then again, before and after. Okay. 
So what have I done? Well, I've done the cropping all those other basic things. So you can see the before and after. I've, you know, you, and what you can do, again, if you're not sure, you can go through your history. This is quite a good thing to screen grab because it shows you how you've edited. So shift command number four gives you a target and you can target that. You can pop that on your website and then you can show what you've done. Also, probably a good thing to do, if I screen grab that image here, you can see the before and after. I probably would have done that at the start because I've actually cr cropped this now. Remember I said when you crop it, you can't see the difference of the crop before and after. So I'd probably um, crop last. Um, and then again, screen grab. So what you can do, you've got the before and after edits screen grabbed and you can pop them straight in your website. Okay. So what to do next? Well, I've got the two versions. If you wanted to keep the before and afters, you could save it as a Photoshop file. If not, you can just save it as a JPEG. So save as. Now, I could rename, I'd probably rename this at this point. And what I tend to do is call it edit. Okay. And I would save it as a JPEG because that means I've got the original version and the edited version still in my shoot one. Keep it maximum, we can always make it smaller later. And that's saved. Let, let's show you what we've got on the desktop then. Um, yeah. Um, hang on, I don't know what I'm doing now. Let me just cancel that. I don't think I need to, to save that. Okay. So what have I got on my desktop? I've got a screenshot of the before and after, which I can put in my log. Again, I would probably screenshot that before it's cropped. And then I've got the screenshot of what I actually did for the editing. So it saves me having to write a load of information that's already there. And then I can discuss why I've edited the way I have and why I think it looks better, etc. Photo P is very, very similar. Have a look at that when you're at home and have a practice. I think that's it for now. Good luck.